Hello once again, it's Joe the CRM chap here and I'm back with a brand new series, uh, this time all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam uh, for those who are building solutions on top of the Power Platform. So I'm really pleased to be back with this with a new set of videos where we're going to hopefully do a similar t thing to what we did last year with the MB400 exam series. Um, got some really fantastic feedback from quite a lot of people about that so I'm hoping we can have the same impact with this series as well. So in today's video we're going to start off by looking at solutions. Now solutions are, are the cornerstone uh, for anything that you're trying to do with the Power Platform. If you're building out a solution, if you're experimenting for the first time, uh, or if you start a new project, let's say, you're always going to want to start with getting your solution built out first of all. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to show you how you can create a solution using the new Maker Portal. We're going to show you how you can add components into that and then talk you through the experience of then getting that deployed out into a separate environment. So you can see, first of all, we are in the make.powerapps.com portal up here. Uh, we've got an environment set up for our dev test. Uh, and what we're going to do first of all is create our solution file. So we're going to click on solutions down here. Click on new solution at the top. And at this point, we have to give a few details about what we're doing. So we'll just call this our PL400 uh, demo solution. Uh, call it solution like so. Uh, we can customize the display name and the na and the name value. Name value generally needs to be in this sort of format here, without any you know all one word and things like that. Um, so in this case, we're probably just going to rename our display name to something a little bit more friendly, a name like that. Uh, an important thing that every solution needs is a publisher. Um, so by default, you've got some publishers which are provisioned in your environment for the first time. Typically, though, you're going to want to create your own one with your own unique prefix and all the various different settings settings that are available as part of that. So what we want to click on here is Publisher first of all. Uh, it's going to send us out into the classic experience, so just give that a second just to load up. And then when the new Publisher screen loads we have to give some details about who our Publisher is. So typically you may want to name this after maybe let's say a company, uh, a business area in your organisation, something that's going to be useful and unique. And you can see down here you've got fields for like contact details as well, which is sort of in sort of support of this objective. So today what we're just going to call it, we're going to call our um, Call our uh, display name Contoso Manufacturing uh, Limited. Uh, we're going to give it a name of um, leave the name value like that. Typically, you may put in a description, um, so maybe just call this uh, Publisher for Contoso. And then the important things you want to configure down here. So first of all, you've got your prefix uh, for your particular um, for your particular solution. Um, so this may be. Um, uh, this will always ensure that your customizations are uniquely identifiable. It's typically very bad practice to use new underscore prefix for your customizations. So we're going to give this maybe something like uh, CON instead. When we click away, we can see that straight away we get a preview of how that would look with our components as we build them out. And then we also get what's called our prefix, our option value prefix. So what this will do is for every new um, uh, option sets or option values that we create in the system in the future uh, it will always make sure they're prefixed with that particular value of that value there and again it's all about keeping your customizations unique so in case somebody was to go in and maybe add on a similar option value prefix in the future option option value in the future um, we want to make sure that we can uniquely identify those components in the back-end database so all that's looking good so I'm just going to click on save and close at the top that will then save that down into our Microsoft Data First database. Click on Done just to refresh the page and we can see our new publisher value is, is available to be selected from there. So we'll click on that down there. We've got some additional options that we can configure so we can maybe control how our version number works. We're just going to keep that as default for the moment. We can add a description. Um, if we're working with, let's say, a HTML web resource or something like that, then we can maybe add on a bespoke configuration page for our solution to maybe provide some more useful contextual detail about what it's actually doing. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that today. And all we're going to do is just click on Create and get our solution created. And we can see straight away it appears on the list up there. And now what we can start doing with this solution is we can actually get components added into it. Um, so we're going to cover how to create custom tables and uh, columns and things like that in a future video. So today what we're going to do, we're just going to add in some existing components that are deployed out into our tenant by default. So we do this by doing add existing at the top. And all we're going to do is just going to add in a few of the common entities, common tables, sorry, that are available as part of um, our Microsoft Data First database. So we're just going to select our account. Uh, our contact and then we'll also just select let's say uh, let's find the task entity yeah there it is click on next 
So typically when you add on your components that you want to work with, uh, you typically maybe just add on just the components that you want to work with, so whether they're existing fields or existing forms or things like that. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna, let's say, add on just the, the form. So let's assume that maybe we're going to customize the default account form that comes with the system. Click on add like so. Um, uh, we're going to assume that for the contact and the task entity, uh, we're going to be customizing um, table metadata properties for that. So in this case, we'll just click on the two down there. Uh, and then with all that selected, we then just click on add. And then straight away, we can see our solution components get added into, um, our components get added into our solution. And if we wanted to at this point, we could customize them further. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to show you, okay, well, let's assume that maybe we've added these in, maybe we've done some more work to these tables, added in some columns and stuff like that. What we want to do at this particular point is actually um, deploy this out into our production environment. So we'll show you how that process looks from start to finish. So the first thing we do to get this exported out is click on the export button at the top. Now, whenever we're doing any sort of customization work targeting the dataverse, we always want to make sure we give things a publish first before we um, deploy them out. Otherwise, uh, the components that we've customized might not actually get exported out correctly. So we click on publish at the top. This will take just a few minutes just to publish all that out for us. So just give it just a second. And you can see down here, we've actually got an option here being able to run the solution checker. We're going to cover that off probably in a future video, uh, but it, just in a nutshell for now, uh, this is basically just a best practice tool that you can use just to make sure that your customizations, the things that you've created as a developer, are actually uh, going to be solid from a best practice and from a usability standpoint for the platform. So for now, we'll just click on Next. We can see our solution version number gets automatically prefixed out. Uh, if we wanted to override that, we can. So maybe I could change it to two if I wanted to, but for now, we'll just leave that as one. And then we get two options for how we want to export things out. So typically, um, if you wanted to maybe move this into another development environment, if you wanted to incorporate it as part of a source control solution, which we're going to cover off in a future video, you'd always want to select on manage down there. For any situation moving forward, the recommended approach now is that you deploy it out as a managed solution. And what that effectively does is it um, puts controls over the various components that you've customized. Uh, you can control the options about whether or not certain individuals can actually modify those or not. Uh, and in addition, it also makes the installation and the removal of that solution a lot more easily, uh, easily easy to achieve. With unmanaged, uh, you typically have to go in and remove components or modify components manually as part of an installing that. So because we're going into our production environment, we select manage up there, click on export, and we'll just give that just a few uh, seconds, we should see that it will start to download for us. Solutions are always exported as zip files, okay? And in there, there's all the various different components that we customize. And we'll look at exactly what's in that zip file uh, when we start to inspect how we can get our um, solutions incorporated as part of our source control solution in the future. So just give that just a few moments just to finish. Okay, we can see it's been exported successfully and down here in the browser, I can see I've got my zip file ready to go in our downloads folder. So now we're gonna move across into our production environment. So if I click on the top up here, you can see down here, I've got PL400 Live as my environment down here. Click on solutions down here, we can see we've got nothing in here at the moment. Um, so all, all I need to do to basically import my solution is go import at the top. It's gonna to ask me to select our zip file that we've downloaded. So I'm just gonna click onto that one down there open that up, click on next. We can see we get some details about the solution, okay, who's made it, the name of it, the version, etc. Uh, if we were working with any plugin steps or flows, we'd get an option here, being able to enable them at this point. Um, but, because it's, but in this case, we're just gonna leave this as default, even though we haven't got anything like that in our solution. And then we click on import. And this is a background operation. Um, that we can effectively track through the maker portal. We can see down here, we get this notification through. This will change as the solution is imported and eventually all being well, we should get a green tick mark to sort of confirm that that's been completed successfully. So just give that just a few moments. Okay, we can see now that's all gone on green at the top up there and in our list now we've got our solution. If we were to click into this now, we can see the components in here that we've customized and we also get the warning at the top that informs us, yeah, because we can't we can't actually modify these components because they're actually in a managed solution. Okay. Um, so now our solution, if we did have customization, this this would be now ready, good to go. If we did uh, decide, okay, well maybe um, you know something's gone wrong, we need to basically just remove this from the environment, start again. We can click the delete button at the top up here. 
Um, because it's a managed solution, as I've said, everything will be removed when we click on the delete button down here. If you've got just, just a second to load, we should then be able to confirm that everything has now been removed from our live environment and we can maybe then go back into our dev, uh, to give fix what we need to fix from our solution, let's say, and then start the whole process again. Okay, and we can see now the solution has gone completely from our list. So this, so this has been just a very high level introduction to how to work with solutions. There are some more detailed concepts around it, which I'm going to be discussing as part of the blog post associated to this video. Uh, check the comment, check the uh, description below for a link to that if you want to find out more. But really, as I've mentioned at the start of it, uh, solutions are so important for developers to get their head around, and it always should be something that you consider upfront when you're designing your Power Platform solution. Make sure you've got your publisher created. Don't be using new underscore prefix for your customizations and understand the process of how you can roll your solutions out and more importantly, the differences between your managed and your unmanaged solutions. So thanks for watching the video today. I hope you found it useful um, as part of you preparing to uh, sit and revise this exam. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, give the channel a like, a like and subscribe as well uh, if you enjoy the content. Uh, and in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can uh, basically deploy out our customizations and our data using the Solution Packager tool. So I'll see you next time.